Lee Jones. I'm the Associate Dean for Student Affairs and a Clinical Professor of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at the University of California, Davis. And I'm here with Dr. Andrew Hollenbach, the Associate Professor of Genetics at Louisiana State University Health Science Center. Good morning. Thank Good morning. you for joining us. Sure. So maybe you could start by telling us how you define inclusiveness in the context of academic medicine. Well, to me and at my institution in general, um, the idea of inclusiveness is the idea that basically everyone feels welcome, regardless of their sexual orientation, their gender identity, their race, their ethnicity, their um, religious background. Um, and then that they feel comfortable, not only within the environment, sitting in the classroom, but that they also are hearing things that are being lectured to them um, that include them and don't necessarily include them as a separate or special category, but include them amongst everything else that's being taught to them. Okay, great. What is the role of an inclusive institutional climate in academic medicine? Well, like I said before, was that basically they feel welcome. Um, and if somebody feels welcome, if they feel that it's safe for them to go, or if they don't feel uncomfortable in going to class or walking around the institution, regardless of who or who they are, they're going to—it's going to be easier for them to learn. They're going to be feeling more welcome, more included, and therefore, it's going to be easier for them to learn in that environment. Okay. So it's, it's really being part of the community. It's being part of the community, yeah. absolutely, without question. Okay. Yeah. What are the challenges in creating an inclusive institutional environment and climate specifically related to LGBT and DSD affected individuals? I think probably one of the biggest challenges is the visibility. Um, because unlike a lot of other of minorities, a lot of people who are LGBT can pass. Mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't necessarily know by looking at a lot of the community that they are um, gay or lesbian or bisexual. Um, so therefore, it is the visibility that they are there, that we are present among them, and that we are a part of the community. So getting that visibility out there so that people know that it's there, mm -hmm. but then also getting that visibility within the curriculum. So that is absolutely one of the biggest challenges because a lot of institutions don't include that. Um, they have just a few hours um, in a clinical scenario in four years of medical education, or even depending on the residency, um, you know, in nine years of education and training that they're getting. So getting that incorporated in there too is also a, a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. Can you maybe give us some examples of some of the challenges at your own institution? Um, well, at LSU, I think actually one of the biggest challenges that we have is attrition. And what I mean by that is that at LSU, we um, recently, I guess it was about three years ago, we started our first LGBT organization. I was instrumental with one of the students, Daniel Punicky, um, who at the time was a first year medical student. And he came to us and initiated this program, initiated what we call LOCUS, LGBT Organization for Cultural Understanding in the Sciences. But then he did a great job of getting started, but then he went to his third year medical school. Mm -hmm. And Disappeared. he had no time. And we went into a lull where nobody else stepped up. And as primary faculty advisor, there's only so much that I can do. So it is that sustainability. And how do you deal with the attrition of students as they naturally progress through their education to then identify somebody to then take up the reins till you get the organization and the visibility to the point where it is self-sustaining? Um, another issue that we have is, is infrastructure. Um, now, fortunately, at LSU, we have amazing support from our administration. Our administration mm -hmm. has been behind us 170%. Um, but LOCUS is one of the two, only one of the two that are university-wide. So LSU has, the Health Sciences Center has six different schools, only one of which is the School of Medicine. We cover all six schools, but yet there is not an infrastructure for us as a university-wide mm -hmm. organization to get our visibility out there okay. in terms of having our own website that then can be posted on each of the individual schools' websites. So those are probably two of the biggest. Um, also then curricular change. Uh, fortunately, once again, fortunately, everything seems to be converging perfectly mm -hmm. for us at LSU. Uh, we are going through a curriculum renewal committee. Um, so we are re-examining our medical education curriculum um, for reaccreditation in about six years. I think we go up for it. 
um, and, this, and, and, and examining how we're doing our education, what type of education modality are we using at various different times. And as a basic scientist, I was asked to sit on this committee, but it works out perfectly that at the same time as we're doing this, the AAMC is coming out with our publication where we describe how to incorporate this. So for LSU, although it is still a challenge, because one of the challenges will be, I know there are several committee members who don't think this is necessarily a priority. Mm -hmm. not, just L, not just LGBT and DSD affected, but diversity in general. They don't yeah. feel that it's a priority. Um, at the same time, we're perfectly poised because we are. We're completely overhauling our curriculum. Mm -hmm. So that way we can put these things in throughout the entire curriculum as in, you know, literally incorporating it into the curriculum instead of saying this is a special class for a special class of people. Mm -hmm. No, no, it can be incorporated entirely. Right. So integration becomes key, obviously. Yes, yes, absolutely. Integration is, I mean, honestly, it's no different than the overall LGBT movement. Um, it's not special rights, they're our rights, and they're human rights, and it's the same thing with medical education. It's, it, it, it's not something that is special to us, it is we are part of healthcare, and we need to be treated such that it is we are part of healthcare in general. Plus, the more that the students are exposed to it in the common context, meaning Throughout the course of medical education, when you have a lecture on, in physiology or on hormone treatments, you have a sub, little sub part of the lecture where they talk about using hormone therapy for transitioning transgender individuals. It becomes part of the natural landscape instead of something that, oh my God, they made me learn about this. It's right. like, no, it became part of the landscape. And that's where the visibility comes in. And that is part of the challenge, is getting it to where it is part of the landscape instead of seen as what people wanting special rights. Okay. So what are the strategies that you can t discuss with us for creating an inclusive institutional climate, again, specifically to LGBT and DSD affected individuals? Well, one, one is absolutely the visibility, is getting the visibility. And visibility means if they don't have it, starting an LGBT organization. Getting that LGBT organization visible such that they're sponsoring various different seminars or they're sponsoring different clinics and getting the name on there that says, you know, mm -hmm. that this LGBT organization is sponsoring AIDS screening or they're sponsoring this seminar on differences of sexual sex development um, and making sure that once again, people are seeing that they're there and they're active um, and also getting people that are involved or interested or motivated on curriculum renewal committees or getting them to talk to the people who have the influence to make the changes that are there. Um, be that a particular faculty member who is lecturing in the class or that they have a good relationship with a dean or an associate dean mm -hmm. that knows who to talk to. Because, and, I, and I say it that way because many times it is. It's the students. Right. It's the students that do this. And the students who find that faculty member that they see as being friendly to the cause or as motivated, regardless of whether gay, lesbian, bisexual, whatever, or an ally. Um, in fact, honestly, at LSU, many of our strongest supporters are straight allies. Right. So I'm hearing multi-prong approach yes. and leveraging relationships Yes, absolutely. It is identifying that relationship. And once you've found that relationship, not only someone who, who understands the administration, who understands academic politics, which is very important, but also someone who is as motivated and dedicated to the process as they are. Okay. Can you provide examples of strategies at your own institution? Sure. In fact, um, that I. A lot of what I just drew from was what, what was, was happening yeah. at LSU. Like I said, with Locus, um, as a perfect example, Daniel you know, was very motivated and wanted this organization to start. So he identified um, two faculty, one of which was me, um, and came to us and said, I want to do this. And the other faculty member wasn't necessarily as motivated, but I was just like, yes, let's run with it. Mm -hmm. But what Daniel also did was um, he ha invited a, a um, clinician from a, a regional hospital, Oxner Hospital in New Orleans, 
who deals with transitioning transgender patients and had her come to, to LSU to give a seminar on hormone therapy in transitioning. We advertised it and it was as from our organization. He also went to one of our faculty members, Dr. Patricia Molina, Department Chair of Physiology, who teaches hormones in mm -hmm. physiology. She incorporated that. She came to the seminar and she incorporated that into her classes. Um, also for myself, uh, we had the um, Vice Chancellor of Diversity and Minority Affairs, Dr. Derek Rivaris, who was very, very motivated and behind us 120%. He made sure that we have um, these large electronic boards for the month of June. So he picks various different months to hi um, highlight various different minorities. For the month mm -hmm. of June, he highlighted the LGBT, LGBT History Month and LGBT Pride Month and showed various different individuals who were gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender who had made advances in the medical education mm -hmm. profession. So those are some strategies that are just starting right. at LSU. Um, another thing that has happened was our dean, Steve Nelson, has been amazing, very supportive, but he's done a dean's strategic initiative. So after five years, we did this five years ago, after five years, we've re-examined, and one of the things was climate and diversity. Mm -hmm. um, so in that respect, too, we are trying to address it. We've done, um, Derek Varis also did an institutional-wide climate survey. Mm -hmm. um, so then taking the results of that, and that covered all aspects of diversity. Um, so many different strategies right. for at least identifying where do we fall um, because it's very different for faculty than it is for students. Right. As a faculty, I have no problems whatsoever, but I know various different students say they experience discrimination on various different levels. So identifying where we need to target our efforts through various different means. Okay. Any other thoughts beyond what we've talked about that you'd like to share with us? Any amount of change is good. And don't ever think that you as an individual can't make a difference. Um, L I, and once again, LSU is a very good example. Um, Daniel Punicky, you know, he was the one that says, this needs to happen. Our present president of LOCUS, Rory Buzagard, he's the one that stepped forward and said to Daniel and said, well, why do we not have an organization? And Don's like, we do. He then volunteered to take the presidency myself being motivated and pushing things forward and have patience, absolutely have patience, because even in the most welcoming of academic institutions, the wheels of academic change are very slow, right. very frustrating sometimes, and particularly for the students who don't necessarily understand politics, the politics behind what needs to happen, how it needs to happen, who needs to be spoken mm -hmm. to and how they need to be spoken to, in order to get things done, or even the process of the red tape. So absolutely, for anybody willing to make a change, don't think that by you, by you saying, oh, I'm just one person. No, open your mouth. Absolutely open your mouth. Identify that one person who can help you, but also understand that it is going to be very slow, right. very slow. So just start and be prepared for the long haul. Absolutely, okay. and do not get discouraged. Okay. Or if you get discouraged, deal with it, Accept it, get over it, come back, and come back and move on. Okay. Thank you. Sure.